Hello friends, family and other creatures of the sea and welcome to the GSL Season 1 2024 Grand Finals. We're in the top left spawning as our Red Terran player. It's gonna be Maru playing for Team Vitality. In the bottom right, the man, the myth, the legend. It's going to be Mr. Hero over here, of course. Looking forward to see what he has uh, cooked up for us in this best of seven. And that's something that's important to note here is that Hero is the guy that usually does the weird cooked up stuff. And uh, Maru more the player that, although likes doing aggressive things, more standard aggression. And now actually opening up with, well, something very, very standard. Holy crap, Marine into Reactor. This is so standard that it's almost not standard anymore. No Terrans want to play this because it's too, it is too, I don't not too solid. Just too predictable. You know exactly what you're going to expect here if you're the Protoss player. So I'm not a huge fan of this as the first build in the game. But with Maru in uh, control, I, I, I can really get behind any type of build. Let's see what Hero's plans are. Ooh, fast Twilight Council. Went for a no scout, so has a little bit of extra money. And we see that uh, being invested here in a really quick Twilight Council. This actually is really fast. A solid 7-8 seconds faster than usual. Probably because of that no scout. Bunker's going down for Maru as he's playing it safe. And playing safe is often a, a good type of recipe here to deal with Hero. I, I like, I, I really like either playing very solid and safe scouting based StarCraft, or I like the extremely wild all ins versus Hero. Um, I, I think that's generally good to do. I don't like being overly greedy versus him. I think that's often a mistake. Or like these, these half baked pushes. I think if you're pushing, you need to go go all in, and if you're not pushing, you need to play solid, reactive StarCraft 2, which is very possible against Hero um, if you're good enough. For now, Hero opening up with just a two-gate blink build order. So we see a uh, mind drop, and this is as standard as it's gonna get. Maru here, fearing the early game interactions, didn't go for a Reaper, not for a Hellion. Both of these players, by the way, GSL winners in the past. Maru has won seven, I believe, and Hero has won a single one. So both of these players know what it's like to win in the Global StarCraft League that's being held in Korea. Medivac on the way, Tech Lab as a follow-up. And build order-wise, I think this is as good as it's going to get as well for Maru. If you're opening up with like a two mind drop, your opponent opens up with Phoenixes, it's not so great for the Terran player. But against Blink, this is actually kind of fine. It's completely okay. And so we're going to see the Medivac pop out. And the question is, will these two things swap or... Is there going to be a fast tank? It is going to be a fast tank. Now, it could indicate two things. It could either be that Maru really, really badly wants to go for a tank push, but it could also be that Maru is already setting up his defenses. This adept just finishes shape, by the way. As a result, it's gonna die. Doesn't get a whole lot of information for that death. And I actually feel like that's a, a pretty decently sized waste. Adepts are extremely useful at spotting sides. Blink's about to finish up. And Hero's plan here seems solid. His plan is to catch the medevac as it flies in and then counterattack with 4-gate blink. Let's see how well that's gonna go. Does get the medevac, now needs to not lose any of these workers. Losing two workers is completely fine. Uh, maybe not even lose the second one. Oh, this was, this was probably the best defense you can hope for if you're a Protoss player. Minimal losses on mining time, just a single probe going down and you kill a medevac and two mines. Yeah, that's pretty much as good as it's gonna get and I'm loving this quick follow-up attack here coming out of hero as well he's building a forge behind it this is uncommon this is absolutely uncommon and instant charge as well so usually we'd see a much bigger dedication here to this type of push with another stalker warping that's not gonna be the case because instead we're already seeing investments into well more of a mid game really more of a early mid-game timing attack, which most likely is going to be of, initially at least, two bases. Now, Liberator is going to move across the map. We don't have any Stalkers at home. Maru is going to move across the map despite seeing these extra gates? This is such a cookie situation here. I am absolutely not familiar with this, with this type of game. This looks so weird. It really looks extremely weird. Tank is going to get sniped here as well. Four SCVs have already gone down. Charge halfway done, though. It's nowhere close near finishing. If Hero just would have warped in four more Stalkers aggressively, and would have kited this army back home, he would have been in a phenomenal spot. 
it almost feels like Maru knows something that I don't. Like, these guys must have played each other recently. This is such a weird strategy. Such odd execution here. I cannot believe that this is really happening. And Maru just walks across the map and he's ready to win right now. Charge is still a couple of seconds from finishing. But at this point, I feel like the damage has already been dealt. Blink on top of these tanks. There is plus one attack going up behind this as well. But 13 workers have fallen. I mean, how in the world is Hero going to come back into this game? I just don't really see it possible. Now, one good thing here is going to be the complete lack of stim. And we're now going to go up to 5x. This is, uh, honestly, if you would have given me this game and asked me what league this is, I probably would have said Grandmaster, but I wouldn't have said High Grandmaster. This is such, a, such weird decisions here that we're seeing. And that's often what happens with Hero. That's awful. He's now going to follow us up with Disruptors. Such scrappy games. Well, such a scrappy game. No combat, no stim. Extremely high marine. Like, moving out against a 4-gate blink. That's usually the equivalent of suicide. But it worked out well this time. Now, we're still going to have an attack coming out of Heroes. Plus one, not quite done. 7, 8 charge lock charging in as well. This tank is going to get targeted down by the Stalkers. As the bunker falls, SCV pool is extremely late. Two tanks on the high ground. We need some whole position micro on these SCVs. That's indeed what we're seeing. 49 workers to 37. Big damage needs to be dealt here. And Hero needs to be in charge of dealing that damage. Eight workers have fallen. Tanks trying to kind of leapfrog down onto the lower ground. I think Maru can just, and shoot, take this really slow. Hero's the one that's in a hurry. He's gonna snipe one of these tanks. Here comes a disruptor shot. Can he get a lot of these marines? Gets three or four. That is still decent. Plus one has now finished as well. Could potentially blink in four to once again get a kill on that tank. There is a new tank in production. It's about 60-70% uh, done. Infantry weapons level one about to finish up. Still no stim, still no combat shield. Hero's gonna try and blink down here. As money, if a stalker's alive as possible. Prison taking a bit of damage. Here comes a shot of the disruptor. And it's just gonna get one marine. Extremely well split there by Maru. There is no third base yet for either player. Maru up eight workers. Maru probably very confused as to what is kicking off here. Uh, as I am very confused as to what is kicking off. And I have full vision. We have our first Colossus now coming out. We don't have thermal lands. And there's a probe moving over towards the third base. So perhaps we're going to get some type of a transition. Stim plus combat shield half finished up. We have a four zealot drop in the main base. Going to snipe the reactor. And we'll be capable of picking up all of those SCVs as well. We still have double disruptors plus stalkers. And this is such a low supply army that potentially could deal some serious damage. Here comes one. Here come two. And that is indeed going to be... Minus one tank, as the Stalkers are going to kite these Marines back as well. Prism really needs to start moving back home. Or at least towards the side. We're going to get a three-tank push out. Maru, I think, understanding how good his position is here. Ooh, hero. Deal some damage on one of these tanks from the side. We still have this Prism flying around as well, with the double disruptors. Are we going to see another shot here? Yes, we are. Is that going to connect? Ooh, 5-6. Five, 5-6 six. Five, six Marines. This one gets another one. I mean, that's still 7-6-7... Seven, uh, supply in total. SCV's being pulled off the line. This is an ill-advised decision out of Maru. Because he's up in workers right now. He thinks he's attacking into a third base. But there is no third base here. This is such an awkward game. This is this has actually just been an extremely awkward game. Okay, gets that one tank for free. SCV's just need to go back home right now. And that's exactly what Maru's going to be doing. He's going to add some more tanks. Hero completely pretending. Completely pretending like he had a third base. Maru bought the bait, bit the bait, ate the bait. Now there's a hook stuck in his mouth. That's not very nice. Gonna get a pickup here, perhaps? Yeah, blink forward. That would be a very hero-esque move. There we go. Let's be so freaking careful. Get some Marauder and a Marine loses a Stalker and a Zealot. Not the world's most brilliant trade. Two Disruptors, once again. Gonna go in for a drop. <coughs> oh, baby. And that's another one. Yes, sir. These Disruptors are getting some serious value. Some serious, serious value here. Control out of Hero has been phenomenal this game. Let's not forget that this started with him losing, what, like 18 workers to the initial push out, not having a third base. And now we're in a situation where Hero actually in control of this game. I'm not saying he's winning, but he's the one that's in control. He's the one that can do things. 
And Maru is deadly afraid. He's gonna go for a scout with his marine. Wants to know what's kicking off on the other side of the map. We have an 8 marine pickup as well. 4 zealot drop heading towards the main. I do believe we saw also Viking in production much earlier. Is that not around? Must have been cancelled. Two Vikings now on the way. This marine does get the scout. Sees that the base is now finished up. And I think we're actually heading into a... Well, I don't want to call this a macro game, but... Well, it actually is. We're just going to be heading into a macro game. Plus two has already finished here, upgrade-wise. Hero is looking good. Plus three is already on the way. There's a Dark Shrine coming in as well. Not in the best hidden position in the world. As we have Stalkers now going, trying to go in towards the main base. Wants to really make sure that nothing weird is happening. Doesn't want to get caught by the drop. Spotted it with the bottom pylon. Turret's coming in as well, making sure he's not being uh, observed here. Two Vikings in the dead space, stopping any potential prisms. Prism is luckily still alive. That's going to be a nice little scan here out of Maru. See some stalkers on the bottom side. We'll be suspicious of moving in with this uh, with this Medivac Fort base now coming out of Hero. As we've hit a bit of a, a steel patch here in this game. Ghost Academy on the way, more Vikings, more tanks. So to me, as the as a you know, as the as the noob in this situation, this feels like a Viking tank ghost push. 1-1 one, one upgrades, and most commonly you follow this up with like a 4cc. You just get a 4cc over here as you push out. So you, you hit kind of a, a supply spike at some point, and then you cut stuff. You get like a second eBay, armory, as well as a fort base, all at the same time as you're moving out. And your goal is often to try and assassinate a fort base if it is around. Just trying to take that out as, as, as quickly as you can. There's no extra gases. Maru doesn't deem that necessary. His supply is going pretty freaking high here. See Hero adding in some infrastructure as well. Desperately needs it. As well as DT Blink. It's a wild move. Stalker's trying to move towards the middle of the map. Bad vision on the left side. Really needs some Zealot over there. Because if you get a push over here and you're, you know, all your army is positioned in this location, that's not great. Marine Drop's going to head towards the left side. This is such an obvious distraction. I'd be surprised if Hero falls for it. Yeah, well, actually... Not in the right position quite yet with his main army. Colossus now moving in forward, but these tanks have already sieged up. This is this is extremely uncomfortable. Big disruptor shots coming in, but they don't really hit anything. DT from the back starts working on those tanks. We're gonna need to see a big scan. Hello, can we get a scan here? DT still going strong. Two tanks have fallen already. DT is gonna continue on its warpath. Takes out one more tank. Man, three tanks is not a bad trade there for that DT, but the fort base is going to end up falling. And indeed, we have the fort CC behind this. I haven't seen an armory or a second eBay quite yet. And I wonder if Maru can continue pushing on here with this army. Maru believes the answer to that is going to be yes. There's four Colossus out here. The Viking count is only at five, though. That is really scary. Because if these Colossus simply just survive... They can do some big, big damage. Tank's not really in the fight either here. Maru fighting without the tank support. A brilliant blunder here out of our Terran player. So far not looking to be uh, detrimental to his position though. He's just gonna pick up and piss off. Has killed the fort base. No reason to stay around here. But that was sloppy. If those tanks are in range there, there are no zealots in this army. It's just stalker colossus. All squishy units against those powerful tank shots. And it was four tanks not in position to deal with anything. Seven workers now going down in the third. We have Blink coming in. Double scans being used, yet not getting this DT. Do we have any more scans available? I think the answer is actually no, for a couple more seconds at least. So we're going to see more and more SCVs going down. Stalker, Disruptor, Colossus now moving in as well. Hero once again taking the lead in this game. He's down in bases, but he's up in workers. He has the, the mobility with the DTs. We have a Raven being produced. To, to deal with the Dark Templar, I guess. That is kind of cute. That is kind of cute. And we have a fort base being rebuilt. This has been an absolutely bonkers game. A game like I haven't quite seen before. Which is good. I love that. This DT is getting scanned. Does it have the ability to still blink away? Yes, of course it does. And it's gonna blink away. That is two scans for nothing. That is 400 minerals down the drain right there. That's pretty expensive if you only have 41 workers. So every Mew gathers about 225 minerals if cast on a, upon a close-by patch. And that was two scans that just did nothing. Here we're going to get a snipe on the Raven and then on the Viking. Hero's control is, is actually insane. 
his speed at seeing where things are is, is also just crazy. He's going to go into first person view here for a little bit. This isn't first person view, is it? This is first person view. There we go. Oh, that looks way too slow. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking a fifth base, loses two DTs. Unfortunate. Hate to see it. And look at the lack of vision here on the left side. That is so crazy to me. The complete lack of vision here on this, well, basically the entire middle. That's because Hero always wants to be aggressive. He says, if you're moving across the map, I'm just going to kill you. That's his plan. And that's a pretty decent plan, I think. You're inter... Wait, what? This is a mass raven transition in the late game? I've never seen this before. So he just wants the interference matrix a lot of units? But what if Templar get built at some point with feedback? That is so supply efficient. As here we have uh, some good rotations, honestly, coming out of Hero. It's gonna take out a, a bunch of these uh, Widow Mines. Meanwhile, Zealot DT hitting the fort base. I was slow to recognize that, so was Maru. 11 SCVs have fallen. Look at the aggressive moves. Not really committing quite. Oh my god, never mind. He's definitely committing here. Not a huge fan of that. I'm a huge fan of basically everything else, though. Uh, the commitment there didn't make a whole lot of sense, but these purification novas make up for a whole lot. As uh, two interference matrix can now be cast. Can we get one? No, Raven's gonna get sniped. We have one more available. Maybe an anti armor instead. Um, Raven for now just flying forward. Here comes the anti armor. As uh, these Colossus are actually taking quite a beating at the same time, though, Zealots hitting the fort base. Um, we have a disruptor being <laughs> rallied in the tanks here as well. But this run by is going to force Maru's army back home. And the moment Maru goes back home, this gives so much time here for Hero, who already has a fifth base, who has a fourth base, who's on 74 workers. Much superior upgrades, by the way. I didn't quite mention this a whole lot, but it's been 1 1 this entire time. When Maru built the fourth base, he didn't add the armory and the second eBay, which is what we usually see. He just continued all inning basically on the 1 1 upgrades. And Hero with a plus three, then the armor upgrades. I mean, just taking much, much better fights here as well because of that. As uh, now sniping some of these Vikings. I mean, Hero's movement is just so good. And he's going to be taking game number one here, most likely. Um, even if the, the upgrades were reversed at this point, I'd be giving it to Hero. But with the upgrades this much into his advantage. I don't, I don't really see a reasonable way for Maru to ever win this. These Zealots are absolutely going to wreck this Bioforce. Colossus are going to wreck this Bioforce. GG gets called and Hero takes game number one in the Grand Finals of the GSL. I actually don't think there's any player that could have come back in that first game the same way that Hero did. Like, I just can't imagine anyone else doing this. That was so crazy. I just can't wrap my head around it. You know, you know, sometimes you watch games and you think to yourself, oh, I could have played that, or, you know, I, I could have done it. This, this is just not the case. Like, this is much more than, than than just, like, following a strategy that is predetermined. Like, this is so adaptive in the moment and is really seizing every opportunity that is handed to you. This is honestly such a phenomenal game. Such a terrible start, by the way. Some really mediocre decision-making out of Hero, I think, after seeing what was happening with that push. I really believe you just kite that home with, like, all your stalkers, basically, and you should be fine. Um, but then, the, I mean, the, the rest of the game is just... He, he, he just outplayed Maru in such a scrappy situation. He played with expectations, pretending like he had a third base. Like, he tricked Maru into SCV pooling a guy that is down workers on the same amount of bases. It is, like, the level of mind games here are just... It's just phenomenal. And this is, this is the problem that you get with Hero. You can never assume anything for true. You just need to scout. You need to gather information. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to send out an SCV every single game. It can just mean getting scouting information with your Reaper or with your Hellion or with your drop. And I feel like uh, Maru might have failed there in the last game. Losing that drop initially um, really hurt him. Not just because it allowed Hero to just move full across the map, but also because he didn't get so much information. Yeah, although, despite that, Mara still got in a good spot. Such a weird... I just... It's such a weird game. It really was just such a weird game. Freaking Disruptors in a Prism as well. That is so sick. Hero's unit control and his ability to create chaos out of nothing is so important as a Protoss. And I don't think a lot of Protoss players, they quite have that skill. They just don't. Not like Hero. Like he, he is so chaotic and he just makes these situations so awkward for everyone involved.
And then he kind of likes it, you know? He kind of likes it. He's okay with it. What is this? Hero, what are you doing? I don't like this. What, what, why is this worker here? Oh! I do like this. Mmm! What a cute bit of play here. So, one of the most frustrating things on this map is that the Reaper can always escape to this area. Because you have a Reaper jump spot, but you're being blocked by the minerals. And Hero says, no more. I'm not going to get abused by some idiot jumping up and down with his jetpack. I'm just going to mine out one of these mineral patches, which is just a good call. Once again, I haven't seen it before. I bet Hero's been doing this numerous times, though. In, in latter games, this is... This didn't feel weird for him. And yeah, now he's just going to try and chase this Reaper a little bit. He's very far out on the map, by the way. Especially given the fact that his opponent is playing two gas opener. Like this requires some serious balls um, to, to, to chase someone on the right side of the map here. And I guess he has some vision in the middle. It's not going to be the end of the world. Phoenix making its way across as well. It's triple adept, double Phoenix, second gate and more gases. So this feels like it's going to be a robotics facility. That would be here. Very far forward battery. Okay, it's going to be a robotics facility. Not a huge fan of this build. Not a huge fan of this build anymore. I used to be a massive robotics facility Phoenix fan. Phoenix Colossus, as the kids call it. Ooh, he's going to get this, isn't he? Oof! There you go. Reaper goes down. Um... Not as big anymore. Of, not as big of a fan of this anymore. And the simple reason for that is that there's so many builds that make it really difficult for you to get ahead. The thing with Phoenix Colossus is, is that you're never ahead. You're either behind or even. And the game follows a very set pattern as well. Which I think in the case of Hero versus Maru is the exact thing that Hero doesn't want. On the other hand, I don't think Maru is quite expecting this. Maru probably is expecting a faster third base with lots of gateway units. It's going to be pulling some of the boys here as well. Immortal now being Cronaut. This was good vision here coming out of Hero. Hero's going to go behind, which is exactly what he should be doing. Has a decent amount of units. The only thing that could stop Hero here is if he loses pylons and gets supply blocked. That is really the only thing that could, you know, ruin his day here. Oh, that is minus a mine. Is it going to be minus a Cyclone? Oh my god, this is a fantastic start. No, it's not. He loses a Phoenix, doesn't get the Cyclone, loses a second Phoenix. That had serious potential. But it ends up being so bad for a hero. Losing two Cyclones. Now he's fighting away from the battery. This seems like a wild play that I don't agree with. What is this? Right in the, disru in the, in the Liberator zone. Cyclones stay alive as more Phoenixes are going down. The Immortal has fallen as well. The control on the Cyclones is obviously well, practically perfect. Um, good pickups here as well. Now we're going to see this uh, Phoenix get targeted down once more. Cyclone drops here as well. And even if this push isn't going to kill any workers, losing all your Phoenixes is such a freaking big deal. Because that's where all your gas is invested. Super battery needs to be cast. Do we not have energy? No, we do have energy. We're not using the super battery. I don't know why. It's just not being used right now. We have a single Liberator that's now going to siege up. And both of these pylons most likely will end up falling. Third CC on the way behind this. We can see barracks being thrown down soon as well. As a raven starts. I, I really believe that. I, oh my god. Minus two phoenixes there. And then the fight on the low ground. Some, some serious mistake here. Coming out of hero. Serious mistakes. Yes, he's going to clean this up eventually. But that's not what this is all about. We still have a super battery, right? I said we... Right? Yeah, we still have the energy for a super battery. He's so careful with that. Yeah, losing both of these pilots obviously sucks. He's going to lose another Immortal as well. And another Stalker. This control here really was subpar. Really subpar control coming out of Hero. And you look at it and you think to yourself, well, there's them. Why are you complaining so much? It's like, well, the main reason is that these Phoenixes are all gone. And one of the main advantages you have with Phoenix Colossus is that there's a lot of kind of economy in the Phoenixes. At any point, you can give up Phoenix energy for workers or you can give up Phoenixes for workers. That doesn't exist right now. So the only opportunity that Hero has here to strike back is going to be with a straight-up attack. He has one lift available. This potentially could do something. Immortal's going to be moving in as well. Ah, there's a second tank. This can't do anything. This can't do anything. You should not be committing into this. Absolutely no way. Hero, we're not actually doing this. Yeah, the, the goal here for the Phoenix is to try and snipe the Raven. Yes, absolutely. He's going to lose a Phoenix for it. Um, that is a trait that I don't necessarily mind. He's going to follow it up with second Stargate and Fleet Beacon. I think this is an okay call. 
because this game freaking sucks for him right now. Eco for his opponent was going to be just a little bit better here, um, as he has the double mules, actually the triple mules. Um, SEV count is relatively close, so although it looks bad right now for Maru, just because of how good the infrastructure looks, he's going to blast him. Or if it wasn't for the carriers, he was going to blast him in supply very soon. So carriers actually make it that you can often stay closer in supply to your opponent due to the fact that you're not investing so much in infrastructure. If you're playing a charge lot follow-up, you're going to need six more gateways. It's a lot of money into infrastructure um, that isn't really getting you any supply. So very often, these types of bills, they give much higher supply and they allow you to stay alive for a bit, um, but you lose basically all map control. If you were ever going to get any, now that, it, that, that, that point is void. Like, it's just not going to happen. Hero's gonna instead try to opt for a fast forward base. What does scan exactly see? Not enough. Okay, double carrier production. And ah, the problem with this build against triple CC is, is that there's so much money for quick responses coming out of Maru. So Maru, first of all, actually has a decent chance of just straight up winning with this push. I mean, we don't have a single Colossus out. He never built a Robo Bay. So that means that these Marines are actually gonna be freaking banging over here. Look at this, he's just moving forward. He's like, wait a second, you have no units. He was like, no, no don't, don't worry, buddy. I'm building them. And although that is true, I'm not sure how useful they're going to be. A couple extra cannons now coming in. Batteries as well being thrown down. Fort base, as well as Tempest. I like Tempest because really he's being kind of constricted in his movement here by Maru. Maru now scanned, sees those carriers. <laughs> These interceptors need to get out before they can do anything. There's no combat quite yet, but the moment combat shield finishes up, this is going to suck. Absolutely. Cyclone moving in. Tank starts focusing some of these units down. Here comes an anti-armor missile. No double interference matrixes on the carriers. Tempest in the back showing up as well as Maru. She's going to straight up walk over his opponent. I did not realize there were no Colossus here, but I think even with one or two Colossus, it's going to suck. As uh, Tempest in the back trying their best. Stopping this push in, but yeah, Maru just absolutely winning here, and he's not gonna let down the pressure either. It's just straight up rally pushing across the map with more mines, gonna take out the fourth base with these Marauders. I mean, Tempest are trying their best, but who cares? We have a second starport, we have another armory coming in as well. You can throw it on a fourth base, it literally doesn't matter because it feels to me like Maru's just gonna win with this push straight up. Like, he actually, he can take out all bases and most workers, but he probably can't kill these Tempest. Killing Tempest requires something else. Um, it requires Viking. Really just Viking. So tanks are going to fall, but hey, the game is just you know, practically just over now. I say that. 15, 16 Marines with 1-1 one, one upgrades. Vikings now in production. Two at a time. Can fly this barracks over, or sorry, starport over to the factory. Get more. Yeah, if you're not counterattacking here as hero, I mean, you're, you're giving up this game. You're absolutely giving up this game. You're down 26 workers. You're down, well, soon to be two bases, or at least, well, right now one base, which is already a bad situation for Protoss against Terran. Usually you want to be up a base against Terran, and that's definitely not going to be the case here. Maru has so many things that he can do. He can base trade. He can fight the army. He can pause the game, move over to the hero, scream in his ear to leave the game. Probably get penalty points for that, but I still think it would work as well. Like, Hero is good, but this is really pushing it. This is really pushing it. It's trying its best. I mean, I think it's cute. I really do think it's cute. But the moment, like, 8-9 Vikings are out, which is going to be relatively soon, this should not work anymore. Marines also going to start a chase here. We'll get one Tempest. Are potentially even going to get a second one. Marines still moving in forward. Um, Maru just believes that he can fight this just with the Marines, and I'm not so sure about that. As uh, interceptors have now disappeared, Tempest also disappearing rapidly. Okay, now he absolutely could. Maru with a very solid read on this game. What he needed to do got done. As uh, this recall gets forced, still 48 workers to 79. A third starboard now on the way. Ship weapons level one halfway done. Plus two air weapons on the way here for Hero. Yeah, this is just. There's actually no way that Maru loses this. It is so hard to imagine a. You know, a method of losing. I actually think I could be taking over and winning as the Terran at this point. I'm always afraid of saying things like that, because I've seen my own Terran play, but I think at this point I feel comfortable enough. You can you can do two things. You can just continuously trade and deny fort bases, 
Um, or you can just go for a mess, like a, a, a kind of a maxed out push and also just win. Because your production is just going to be better. Look at that income difference here. 3.1k against 1800. Vikings now moving in from the side. He's just going to move in towards the third base. And Although I, I think this is probably the riskiest move. Um, it still should absolutely be fine. He also fought before 2-2, by the way. This was literally the worst timing that Maru could have hit. Like, unironically, the worst. If there's a way for Hero to come back, it would have to be on the back of like five fights like this. But yeah, despite the timing being terrible, it, I think literally it just doesn't matter. Like the production is just too big here. There's just too many Vikings that will pop out. Ghosts are being added in as well. This third base is falling. Like this army might even disappear. I don't think it will. Yeah, it doesn't matter. GG gets called. Maru wins this game and ties up the series. Game number three is going to be played here on Ghost River. The, uh, one of the new maps in the map pool. I'm really wondering what Hero's plan is going to be this time around. So far we've seen two uh, very different types of strategy. One strategy I like, the other one I didn't. Well, I'm not even sure if I like the first game strategy either. It worked though. And I'm a big fan of winning games, so we'll give that, uh, that one five stars. There's going to be a second guess. Oh, there is. Yeah, this is Maru kind of as we know him, with a lot of two gas build orders. Heavy focus on the factory units. Really animation of the refinery. Shoop, shoop. That building basically constructs itself, doesn't it? It's SEV just kind of drilling around. Massive idiot. God, I hate SEV. These guys are so not cool. Why do they have 45 HP? Why do my probes only have 20? It's kind of messed up, isn't it? It is. I love these animations as well. I can actually look at this type of stuff for like five years. This is the type of stuff as well, like just the animation of the refinery that you'd see under like a an Instagram reel or like a TikTok video. So there's like a dude talking above it and then this is below it. This is like mentally stimulating for the zoomers, you know? Why like, <laughs> oh, they stop getting gas now? This would not be mentally stimulating for the zoomers. I didn't know that it would stop moving then as well. That is so cool, actually. God, this game is so well thought out. I've never thought of the animation here. What happens? Oh, you see the the gas kind of being ploffed over, and then the probe in there grabs it and pisses off again. And even this this thing pumps in forward as well. So much attention to detail in StarCraft, man. It's beautiful. Reaper's gonna scout around. This is standard uh, Maru stuff. High ground command center as well. Also standard Maru stuff. He sometimes builds it on the low ground when he's a risky boy. But uh, yeah, he's not feeling that now. Sentry. Stalker into sentry. Okay. This is one of these builds that Terrans will complain about. But then they don't exist. You know what I mean? The Terrans often complain about things that don't exist. And one of the things are sentry builds. Like no one has ever seen a sentry build being played. And when they are being played they always lose. Yet every Terran worldwide complains about sentry openers. There has to be a reason why not a single toss plays them. When I try to explain that to Terran players, they tell me that Pros players just have brain damage. Which is funny, because that's the same thing I, I often say about Terran players. So I'm really curious what the plan here is going to be. I actually saw a cute sentry opener the other day out of stats, which also was in the GSL. It was in this round of eight group, I think it was. I thought he did it against Cure. Went into three gate from it. Yeah, this, this is the same build. I think this is not a bad build at all. I think this is actually a, a very playable build. Especially in the new patch. Because you're in time to deal with Cloak. You can reactively have a robotics facility out. Um, and you have insane production as well. The only problem with this Blink build... Now here, here comes the only problem with this Blink sentry build. Is the fact that you don't have freaking Blink. There's no Blink. This is why no one builds a sentry, because your stupid blink is delayed by like an hour. Like, usually your blink finishes up at like 4.20. Now the blink is gonna finish up at what? Like freaking five minutes into the game, if you're lucky? Like, that is why no one plays sentry builds. Because yeah, it's great that you have scouting information, but now you die anyway. It's like you just know how you're gonna die. It's like looking into the future and you're getting hit by a car tomorrow. It's like, oh, you can't change it. It's like, what? God, I hate you, sentry. Wish we never became friends. But yeah. That's what everyone always tells me. Uh, mine drops coming in with a double on burrow. Good control here by Maru once more. As uh, something in the natural also killed a worker. It's quite a bit of mining time denied. 
this bad boy is going to stay around for at least a little bit. And the follow-up is going to be Cloak anyway. So what Maru did here is actually so cool. So he fakes... Uh, well, it isn't a fake. He goes for a mind drop and then still goes for Cloak after. So the Cloak's going to hit late, but the Sentry is not going to be scouting that. Well, unless he goes for another hallucination. And he also has a Robo already. So really, this isn't all that bad. But still, it feels frustrating. Because the Sentry should be giving us this info as fast as it can. God, I hate Sentry so much, man. God, these jeans are so stupid. Okay, he's going to send out the hallucination. Get some information with that hallucination. And Protoss players will be fine. Ooh, scouts the cloak. Let's take a look at his response here. Another uh, observer sends <laughs> this one back home. He's like, ah. Oh, you're coming home with me, buddy. You're coming home with me. It's gonna stay in the natural. Matter of fact, trying to pop in here comes the Banshee. Nice, starts attacking this pylon. It's a big move. That pylon is definitely gonna bother him later on. Nexus is well on the way. So we're gonna have a marine tank push out. Stalker's trying to march across the map to try and deal with this. Uh, this is awkward. Mind drop hitting some kills here as well. We still have this Banshee as well that's now gonna pop on in over here. Battery is about to finish up, which actually is quite nice. I don't lie about that. What's this Banshee doing in the back? He's trying to take out another pylon. There's no observer here to deal with this Banshee. There's a second Banshee. I think this base is dead. A great build here with the Sentry. Dies again. again. I'm telling you, this always happens. Sentry builds, they work so well in theory. And whenever I think about Sentry builds, I like them a lot as well. I actually think the Banshee should be splitting off from the main army here almost. Because then he can get some kills in the main. Well, uh, maybe this is better. Maybe this is better. We have Stim on the way already behind this. We have a third Barracks on the way too. Do we have an eBay? Of course we have an eBay. It's already producing plus one, Kevin. This is unbelievable. Banshees continue. They have a lot of damage output, by the way. I think a Banshee deals as much damage as a Marine. Uh, five times as much, sorry. Not as much damage as a Marine. That would be a terrible unit. <laughs> you could just build more Marines instead. <laughs> There's a third Banshee here as well. Is the Banshee going to turn around? Maybe it's even five times as much as a Stimmed Marine? Or three times as much as a Stimmed Marine? I remember the numbers being pretty crazy when I was looking at it. I was like, man, Banshee have a lot of damage output. Okay, we're going to get another t uh, tank siege up here. Um, so, theoretically, this game is over. Like, legit. If you if you were to ask most people, but we, we know what Hero can do. We know what Hero is capable of. He's capable of a lot of crap. I'd love a blink forward here. Not now anymore. Now it's too late. To blink forward. What? That was terrible. Okay, now it's really over. It already was fairly over. The only thing he can do at this point is go for... Wait, he has a Robo Bay and a Templar Archives? Okay, well... It's your party, hero. But... Uh I'm glad that I wasn't invited, because <laughs> this, this party is about to freaking die. This is a terrible party. Robo Bay plus Stormers. Just not a fan of that. Just not a fan of that. <sighs> it's a lot of resources. Oh, now the Banshees are going to spot this prism as well. That's got to be a bit frustrating. Same time, the Banshees also do get spotted. Maybe you want to feedback this? No, it seems like a mistake. That actually would seem like a mistake. Here comes a minor tank move out. What's the chance, by the way, that Maru just wins the game? There's actually nothing at home, is there? This Templar doesn't have energy. You could have clicked that. You just run in and you start shooting stuff. Ooh, oh, that was a yeah. okay first storm. Terrible second storm. You get double feedback. We have one more storm available. Oh, uh -huh. hero! Very reasonable defense here. He's now gonna drop these archons on top of his opponent's army, uh, which is a, a, a never before seen move as well. Never seen before. I still think that Maru is winning. This is such a this entire series has just been so odd, but such beautiful StarCraft two games. Like, Hero is just... This is magic. This is absolute magic. 
Okay, he definitely got a letter from Hogwarts when he was 12. Or 9, or however old you have to be to go to freaking Hogwarts. This is Dumbledore's favorite student. What the hell? Thank you forward? No, no need. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna get a little drop here in towards the natural of the opponent. We have a third base coming up as well. We're coming up, it's already done. Fourth base coming up perhaps soon. Like I'm almost starting to believe again in, in this in this in this situation. It is crazy how good hero is that is. You can never count them out. But really never count them out. His ability to fight with garbage armies, with small, tiny armies, out of poor economical situations, is just so insane. And also his ability to blink forward into bad spots is also insane. Duality of man. Oh, pick up. There we go. <laughs> his control is so sick. Does he have any Templar remaining? No, he really doesn't. Uh, can't keep all of these stalkers alive. It feels like Hero just starts playing better when he's behind. Actually, I'll make a recommendation to him to just kill his first worker every single game. Oh, here come some drops. Okay, gets a storm on these tanks. That wasn't great. There's one more storm available. That was okay because it denies quite a bit of damage output. Good defensive fight here. Really just... Really good defensive fight even. Templar, our thermal lens is now starting. Do we have any upgrades? We have plus one that's done. Fort base coming up for both players. Gateway count is at 7 as well. Not a huge fan necessarily of this move out because there's ghost out already. But there are no tanks, no mines, no vikings. Second colossus coming in. If thermal was done, I wouldn't have even minded an attack here. I really wouldn't have. But without thermal lands, I think it's too risky. I think this prism just got spotted, didn't it? I think this prism absolutely got spotted by that scan. I'd be shocked if Mario takes damage against this. And I think these vikings will be rallied towards the bottom side or to the left side. Yeah, yeah, oh my god. Maru is hunting. He's absolutely hunting, and he, he he's found what he's looking for. There's his little prism, he's gonna try to run away. Prism is dropping him. Oh. Prism does stay alive, so will these four zealots. At least for now the prism stays alive. It's scary to get your vikings out too far in case some stalkers show up. Take out two vikings for free, that's a pretty big deal. Here come stalkers moving in forward. Hero is paying attention though, gets a blink out. Uh, baits a stim as well as a ghost EMP. Honestly not bad. Look at this prism, man. Look at this prism. He's just going around. And he might even sneak by these vikings. He's absolutely gonna sneak by those vikings. Hero. is some phenomenal maneuvering here once again. Is now gonna move on top of this ramp. Oh, that was a freaking big Templar hit. Blinks him forward. Snipes a ghost. Prism, meanwhile, hitting the main base as well. We have a disruptor shot available. Good zoning storm. Very good zoning storm. As we need a warp in, in the opponent's main base. As uh, I hear, oh no, this rally. That rally of the Colossus is potentially detrimental. Same time, he's dealing some damage in the main base of his opponent. Five SCVs have gone down. EMP hits all of these zealots. As with a second Colossus here, maybe he can hold. Super battery is active. Well, actually, even with a second Colossus, this would have been very, very difficult. Viking count is still decent. 11 workers do go down on the other side, though. The Zealot run by has done its job. But the main army of Maru has also uh, executed its orders to perfection. As this third is now officially gone. This natural is in serious trouble. We have a new Colossus coming out, but the Vikings can potentially just shoot that. Do we still have any EMPs available? No. Colossus on the bottom side is going to fall. Vikings now are going to just kind of refocus their attention towards this top side as well. As the prism returns back home. This game is going to end with Hero being forced to tap out. After once again, just an unlikely almost comeback out of Hero. Brilliant play, but not quite good enough. As Maru wins uh, game number three. And that brings us to game number four. As uh, Maru takes the lead in the series. We had an instant scout coming out of Hero. He's gonna block his opponent's barracks. Yeah. Okay, Maru is a main base barracks builder then. Different Terrans have different responses to this. Hero with some always phenomenal probe control. Let's see how he's gonna figure this all out. Bumpy dumpy dum. He's running around. Up, oh, turns around instantly. It's gonna damage a lot of these SCVs. And then you have to pull back this SCV at some point. 
Ooh, it's going behind the mineral line. Quick dodges. <laughs> Next SCV pops out out of the CC to go follow this probe. This has been very good defense out of Maru as well. It's not so easy. It looks easy because he's doing it very well. And then it looks kind of it's like, well, how could you die to this? But I've seen many top Terrans just lose workers to this or having to pull like two, three workers at a time to, to deal with this crap. It's often the case with StarCraft 2 is that things don't look so difficult to deal with if they're being dealt with accurately. Um, the problem often is is that <laughs> people don't deal with them well and then it looks way too strong. It's like If things are in balance, like when both players are very good and this doesn't look like much of an issue, but i really seen games just being won with the probe. It sounds stupid, but it's true. Barracks flying over to this location. No second uh, depot quite yet. High ground CC. Quick factory. Problem with this is just that this zealot is not going to really do anything. It's going to be incapable of doing anything. Might get a kill on this marine, but even that is uh, unlikely. Yep, it's going to just move behind the, the wall. It's a serious risk you take by building that zealot early on. It really is. Uh, Warp Gate has already started, so I'm expecting a Twilight Council. In general, when you see a, a Zealot in the early game, you usually expect a Twilight Council because the Zealot delays the gas a bit, so getting a Stargate is extremely expensive. Can't really afford it most of the time. Here we go. Moving in forward. Start hitting this reactor. I mean, it's cute, but completely pointless. Like, completely pointless. There, re there really is just nothing here. I think there's nothing here. Because I think these two marines are going to finish up in time. You're going to need a small bit of repair here. Should be in time to pull away every individual dude. Yep, there we go. Oh. Actually, one of these bad boys is going to go down. That's minus one marine. Now the cyclone is about to pop, though. Hero's sense of timing is... Ah, freaking sick, man. This guy is so good. That's crazy to me. He just knows everything. Just every little, every tiny, tiny, tiny little timing he, he's aware of, he's familiar with. He's now going into three gate blink. Two adept still alive. Cyclone is out, he's too afraid to move out. Second cyclone on the way, it's gonna go into triple CC as well as a second barracks here. It's interesting. Robotics facility. I wonder if we're gonna see uh, extra gates here. Like, we could get a fourth gate maybe. Over some heavy, heavy pressure, but doesn't quite feel like that's what Hero is going for here. Instead, he's just building a pylon in this location. Could this potentially be a fourth gate proxy? And then, rather than getting a prism, you get an observer with this. Oh no. It's gonna scout the pylon. That is frustrating. Probe could end up dying anyway. It's probably gonna build a gateway here, I, I reckon. But maybe at this point doesn't want to anymore. Okay, still gonna build a gateway. Yeah. Hmm, cancels that uh, adept shade. Bunker starts. That pylon spot was freaking huge, by the way. Absolutely massive there for uh, for Maru. Hero in a massive supply block. Look at this. 54 out of 54. Supply block on his worker. Supply block on his observer, which is terrible for him. Blinks on over. He's gonna try and get a kill here. Uh, we'll need to blink out at some point in the future. Yes, uh, that's indeed what he's going to be doing. Mm. Loses enough units to not be supply block anymore. But that supply block was very, very painful. We're going to see another warp in at some point. And usually with this type of build, if you're playing against a triple CC, you don't just want to deal damage. You have to deal damage. Absolutely. And that is definitely the case over here. I mean, two eBay's already going up. Third CC. What? All right, that is probably the worst thing that could have happened for Hero. He's gonna just need to take a third base, Dark Shrine maybe. Okay, now he's gonna for for Robo Bay plus Forge. Good lord! I honestly think Dark Shrine is the way here. Like you're so far behind at this point. He's already building five barracks before the starport, which is kind of weird, but I dig it. I dig it. He just doesn't have the gas available currently. He's trying to get 1-1 one, one upgrades as well. Let's 
sees at his opponent's base that there is a battery going up as well as two assimilators. Is Maru planning on moving out? It would also be a kind of a sick move, by the way. It's really kind of a weird move. Good damage with these four stalkers, gets four SCVs. But that's not nowhere near enough. Nowhere near enough. We still don't have a third base. Now it finally goes down. Charge starts, plus one starts, first Colossus starts. Like this supply here is going to be so imbalanced. It's going to be like, like 140 against like 100. Because we already have five gateways, or five barracks. Gateway count, what are we at here? We have one, two, three, four, uh, six. Six, but one of them on the other side of the map. It's just the worker count is so low. Once this third base flies over, you start saturating that. Stop being oversaturated here. It's gonna be rough. It's actually just gonna be so freaking rough. Double turrets now on the way. Just some added safety here on Maru's side. And Maru can really pick what he wants to do. He can basically set up any timing attack that he wants to. He can uh, go into heavy macro mode as well if he wants to. He can... A every option is still on the table at this point. Good control on those uh, Marines and Marauders. Doesn't want to stim them quite, seems like. This uh, Marine definitely should end up dying. Please. Yeah, there we go. Gonna end up falling in indeed. Get a scan. This is such an important scan. So imagine you're Maru here and you scan this base. Yeah, he instantly scans the others. Like, wait, is this a fourth base or a third? And now we're gonna get a big fight coming in. Maru not entirely ready for this. Didn't have his tank sieged up. Marines not with combat shield quite yet. Once again, Hero is is looking like a beast when it comes in being behind. Gets a big swipe on these Marines. Wants one more big swipe. Can he get that? Yes, he gets one. Um, but it just isn't enough. It just isn't enough. Even minus seven SCVs isn't quite going to turn this around yet. He's gonna need way more than that. Tank now moving into position. More medevacs on the way. There's a Viking being produced. Um, this is with plus one. So it's not well, it's not insanely all in, but it just has no workers. So it actually is insanely all in. Thermal Lens is about to finish up. It's already extended. Thermal Lens about to finish up. Here we're gonna jump on top of that one tank. Tanks targeting on the Colossus. And Marauders moving in forward as well. It feels to me like uh, our good friend Hero is a little bit dead as the prism control. Phenomenal stuff. Really phenomenal stuff. He's now going to use these Colossus to try and poke him forward a bit. Four Marauders hiding in a medevac. Medevac's completely out of energy, by the way. As the Viking pushes him forward. And that's the last thing that that Viking is going to end up doing. 2-2 two, two starting for Maru. Supply surprisingly even. Four more zealots on the way. Here we go. Three colossus. Can Hero do it? He has such a powerful force here. Observers being taken out. Here we go. Moves in forward. Stalkers blink towards the left. And zealots tanking a lot of these tank shots. Get a rotation to in between the bases. Tank won't be quite in position for that. Mauro thinking of how he wants to position his army. How he wants to set this all up. Ooh, that's a big swipe. That's a very... Oh, that's a big couple of swipes here. Sentry's coming in clutch too. Zealous have now broken the natural hero. Coming in with uh, an attack here towards the natural. 15 workers have gone down. And this is starting to look pretty freaking scary all of a sudden. Zealots in the main base. I'm not sure if that's entirely where they want to be. Target fire with the Colossus as always is going to be good on the Marines. But he's lost two Colossus already. And at this point... It might actually just be too much. As he gets surrounded from like five different angles. He kills 29 SCVs. And he's up in workers for the first time since forever really. But 58 supply overall. 9 army supply to 66. 2-2 two, two is about to finish up. There are no Colossus. And even if there were Colossus. Um, we already have 3 Vikings. Uh, one of these is probably going to die. Blink forward. No. It's not going to risk it. Concussive shells is here as well, of course, so... Gotta be real careful with this crap. I don't even think that Maru wants to wait for 2-2 at this point. I think he just wants to go for it, and... I think that's a very fair decision to take here. Uh, Mule's working hard behind all of this as well. It's 41 works to 49, so even eco-wise, Maru is still fine. He's just gonna push him forward. And uh, even a disruptor shell, like, even if it is, like, hits dead center here and kills his entire army... Maru is still winning. GG gets called as uh, Maru puts himself on match point here. The Grand Finals of GSL Season 1.
in that match number five is going to be played here on Amphion. Amphion is a map which is not quite like the others. I always try to look for something in the map, you know, maybe if you tilt your head to the right or something, you look at the minimap, you see something, but maybe it looks a little bit like, like Mega Man, if you tilt your head to the right on the minimap, like a buff version of Mega Man. Mega Man is the guy in the blue suit, right? I think so. Or suit, no, the Superman is with the cape. Mega Man in the blue suit. I think Mega Man has like a tiny bullet. Mega Man always looked very, very small while being called Mega Man. Like, when I imagine like, someone being Mega Man, you think that the guy is pretty like big armor, like kind of like Jim Rayner, you know? Jim Rayner has big Mega Man armor. Mega Man kind of looks like a... I don't know, it just looks small, tiny. Like a kid, almost. Mega Man looks like a kid. There's nothing wrong with being a kid. We all grow out of it, but... It's just weird to be called Mega Man. And maybe it's, like, ironic or something. Probably had something that someone, someone in the comments gonna tell me. Actually, back then when Mega Man was made, all games consisted of 8 bits. And graphics. It was impossible to make him look bigger. And then why does Mario sometimes look pretty fat? Yeah, make that make sense. Couldn't you just make more of those pixels turn into Mega Man? And then someone will flame me again for being uh, an ignoramus. God, I hate that. Alright. Twilight Council, on the way. I like Blink. I wouldn't have minded on this map. Stargate, though. Why is that? Well, great question. It's because you can fly pretty much freaking everywhere. Once you're here, you have access to the third, you have access to the natural, and you have access to the main base. That is all bases. You have access to all bases from one location. Make it make sense. You can't because it doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. It's wild. It is bananas. B-A-N-A-N-A-N-S. It's bananas. Okay, Blink, Robo. I'm just gonna mine these patches. I don't mind that, actually. I actually think that's pretty cool. We have a second gate. Hero also just never walls, by the way. He's one of these players that doesn't like walls. For a free and open society. Where Hellions can just come in and kill all of his probes. I feel like Hellion builds have fallen off a little bit. They're not quite where they used to be. He's gonna lose one adept, surely. I would have lost both of them here. I guess this move out. See, that's the difference, I guess. That's why I'm not in the GSL finals. Also because I'm not in Korea. But also because I would have lost both of these adapts to him. Like, he's just always paying attention. How is it even possible? Like, How are you still macroing behind this? Make that make sense. He isn't mining this accurately though. Because he now mined two of these patches. And he wants to go get one of these bad boys in the back away. Oh, here is also moving out with stalkers. This is... This is probably as bad as it gets. This is the worst case scenario. Not just a bad case scenario, but the worst case. It, no units. That's, that's a big mistake, Aramaru, actually shooting here. Because there's no units attacking you. You should just be borrowing on borrowing. You could even split the mines over bases to deny mining on two bases at the same time. This was actually extremely mediocrely executed by Maru. I'm not gonna lie. I'm really disappointed by that. I'll send him a strongly worded ladder. Because that wasn't good. Tank sieging up on the high ground. I do like that. Mine drops coming back in. We have a recall as well. Ooh, mine's still gonna hit. No! Seven kills total here. It is 40 workers to 38. Maru is now attacking once again in what practically is the equivalent of a two base all in. This is reminiscent of game number one. And that went terrible for Hero until Hero won it. Um, I This just... Is there a tank at home, though? Yeah, there's going to be a tank at home. There's going to be plenty of marines. Hero is in a god-awful position. Just god-god-awful. He's going to blink across this. He's going to kill that depot instantly. Um, and then here, Maru's just going to run in. And what's the plan from here on out? I just don't quite understand it. Hero with the full-on base trade. Maru with the also full-on base trade, except he also has units at home, so it's not really a full-on base trade. SCVs need to be pulled at this point. Auto turret needs to be thrown down as well. We have more marines coming in. Auto turret needs to be thrown down. Won't get thrown down. Colossus will get taken out. 
could get a couple more defensive warpings here. Hero's gonna go home? What? You can't commit to a base trade and then decide against it midway through. That is really not how base trades work. Because now, you haven't killed anything on the other side. You're probably still gonna lose this Nexus and 50 workers. This Liberator has 14 kills, by the way. Probably all workers as well. This is just over. I love that Maru decides that after killing 30 of his opponent's workers and denying the opponent's natural, that a third base is what he really needs right now. <laughs> you know what would be would be great to have is a third mule. Yeah, that's what I really need. It's like not four bunkers or... Like, unless this morphs into a planetary, this is one of the sickest calls I've seen in my life. It is such a crazy move to make. Like, how does he start a command center rather than two or three or five bunkers? That makes no sense to me. It doesn't matter because the game is still over. But that is a phenomenal call here. He's going to scan these observers. Dark Shrine starts. Natural is being rebu rebuilt as the Banshee flies across the map. I mean, every kill that this Banshee gets is like 5% of his opponent's economy. GG is going to get called. Maru wins the GSL finals against Hero with a 4-1 to one score. And I think he the score is more one-sided than the games actually were. Hero with some serious chances. Um, I, I think with some, you know, the debatable blinks at times and some phenomenal play, Maru gets it in the end. So that's its eighth GSL, I think. Yeah, eight GSL championships. Fantastic stuff. All right, I hope you all enjoyed this too. If you did, don't forget the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you all next time for more videos. It's going to be GSL qualifying replay soon because uh, GSL season two has been announced as well, in which we'll have at least one foreigner, at least one foreigner trying to qualify as Rainer is currently residing in Korea. So that's going to be quite exciting to watch. And uh, maybe we can get some winners interviews as well every single time he wins something. That would be cool. Uh, we'll see about that. All right. Thanks for watching and bye bye.